Hey everyone, Greg Albrecht here. I wanted to walk through an integration I put together recently with Wade Smith down in Australia. Uh, Wade reached out to me on Mastodon about pulling in the Australian Capital Territories uh, Emergency Services Agency incident feed. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar, uh, the Australian Capital Territory, ACT, is kind of like Australia's equivalent to, in the U.S., uh, our Washington, D.C. Um, it's their capital territory. It's where their legislation and uh, other branches of government are headquartered. And like any good municipality, they have their own emergency services agencies for fire, medical, uh, things of that nature. And what's cool about ACT is they actually publish a couple of data feeds of their incidents. Uh, so this is the link that Wade gave us. Uh, this shows their news alerts. They have a geospatial XML feed. Uh, they have their own cap there. Um, and they actually publish their own incident map. But for what we're doing today, we're going to try to pull their incident information from their geospatial XML feed into ATAC. And this is my ATAC running on my tablet here locally. And you can see I'm zoomed in on Canberra right there and the Australian Capital Territories. So what we're going to try to do is see if we can get the ACT Emergency Services Agency's calls into ATAC here on my tablet. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at their feeds that they have available. Um, I've already taken a look at this first feed. This is an RSS feed. It does have geospatial data, but for what we're going to do today, we're going to actually look at this geospatial XML feed. Now if we quick click through and look at this feed, you can see there's a lot of information in here, but pertinent to what we're doing today, you can see that each of their calls, or at least the calls that they publish, um, has call information. Uh, it has incident title, uh, description of the incident, and most importantly, it has a uh, geo RSS point. So it's this uh, latitude longitude here. So we're going to use this information to render this uh, XML feed into cursor on target. And we're going to do that using node red. So Node Red is a system written in Node.js for creating and manipulating and transforming data flows. It runs on almost any operating system, uh, Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Raspberry Pi, Solaris, you name it. Uh, Node Red will run on there. It's really lightweight, and it's really good for doing exactly what we're going to try to do today, which is data manipulation and transforms. So I have it running here on my laptop locally. Um, you can see I'm starting with a blank flow. Um, and if you are firing this up for the first time, this is basically what you'll see when you first log in. You'll see this blank screen here. And to start out, we're going to use some of the built-in nodes from Node Red. Uh, now, if you browse on the left-hand side here, these are all the nodes that are available uh, on your local palette. Uh, the first thing we're going to pull in is, since we're dealing with a HTTP feed, uh, web feed. We're going to pull in the HTTP request node. And the way, I, the way I found that was I just scrolled down here on the left, I clicked on the node, and I dragged it onto my, onto my screen here. And we know what the URL we want is because we already clicked through to it. So we're going to go back over here and copy this URL. So I'm just going to copy that to my uh, clipboard, double click on this node here, and we're going to paste it in as the URL. Uh, the rest of these parameters we could just leave as default. We don't need to change anything else here. The next thing we want to do is we actually want to see the output of this, right? We're going to go out and grab this URL, but we want to see what happens when we grab this URL. So on the left-hand side here, I'm going to click on this debug node and drag that onto my palette. And the way that I'm going to get these to talk to each other is I'm going to click on this first one, I'm going to drag a string over to the second one, and now they're connected. The final thing we're going to want to do here is I need some way of invoking this flow, right? I need some way of kicking this off. So we're just going to use this inject node over here. So I click on it, drag it to my screen, and again, I connect these two flows. And you can see these are all ready to go, but they're all still blue, which means I haven't actually deployed any of them yet. So the last thing I want to do is up, up here in the upper right-hand corner, I want to deploy my flows. Uh, and one caveat I want to give you is um, you should click on this little pull down here and change your default uh, deploy mechanism to modified nodes. Uh, out of the box, Node Red will deploy full, which means it'll deploy everything you do every time you click deploy. But really what we want to do is we only want to deploy the changes that we're making. So my suggestion is you go up here and change this to modified nodes. So I've already gone ahead and done that. I'll click deploy. 
and boom, we're up and running. Now on the right hand side of the screen here is the debug pane. Um, and that's available by clicking on this uh, bug here to show debug messages. And to make this a little easier to read, we'll spread this out a little bit, make it a little wider. So we have our flow, looks like we're good to go. There's nothing on our screen yet, so let's kick this off. And the way we're gonna kick this off is, right next to this node that says timestamp, we're just gonna click this gray box here, or blue, depending on your, on your gamut. We're gonna click that, and you can see the HTTP request node had a little notification there, and boom, we have some stuff in our debug here. And you can see it's the raw XML, same thing we saw when we went to it with our web browser, just raw XML on our screen. Um, so that's not terribly useful to us right now. What we wanna do is we wanna to try to parse this XML. We wanna put it in a format that Node-RED can actually manipulate. As, as it is right here, we can't really do much with it. So again, if we go to the left side of the screen and we scroll down, we're gonna look for a parser. And under parser, we see XML. And what's cool is we can just click on that, drag that in here, and if we position it correctly, usually it'll just drop right in place. Otherwise, let's give ourselves a little room by clicking on debug and spreading it out a little bit. And then we're gonna click on XML and just drop it in place. And you'll see how when I'm hovering over that line, it gives me a dotted line, and that indicates that I'm inserting this node into this flow. Uh, another way you can do this is, if you wanna do it the manual way, is you can actually click on this, kill it, and then drag this in place. But modern versions of Node-RED allow you to just drop that there and now it's connected. And if you see, if we move it, it's in the middle. So again, we're gonna click deploy and we'll leave this on screen just as a reference. And if we trigger this again, you can see instead of getting this, this blob of XML here, we're actually getting an object. So message payload object and uh, in there, we see the RSS data. If we click on this little pull down here, we can start exploring the RSS data that we got back. So you'll see there's some attribute information here, um, and then channel information actually describes the channel. So again, if we, if we go back here, we can see channel, RSS, all of this should match up to what you see in your web browser. So if we continue to scroll down, um, there is an array here called item. And those are the actual calls. Those are the incidents that uh, the emergency services agency is responding to, or at least that's what they're publishing on their feed here. So if we click this pull down, we can see there's about five incidents on the board right now. And if we click on any one of those, we could see all of the incident information that they're publishing. So hazard, reduction burn, uh, a link to the hazard information, a uh, description of the hazard. And then again, most importantly for us, actual uh, RSS uh, point data. So this is the geographical data that we're gonna try to use. Um, as it is right here, the, again, this isn't terribly useful for us. We have a bunch of other cruft in here that we don't really need. What we really want is we want each of these incidents as its own event, as its own uh, message in this flow. So the next thing we could do is we can go in here and we can use the split sequence. And what that split is gonna allow us to do is uh, given the right input, we're gonna be able to split all of these incidents out into their own messages. And then from there, you'll see, we'll do some further parsing to actually spit it out as cursor on target. So we have our split in place. And if we go into split, if we double click on it, so the way I got to this page was I clicked on split, double click. You'll see that split wants message payload as its input. But if we go back and we look at our debug information, we could see our message payload actually has a lot more data than what split's gonna to wanna to deal with. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to want to rename our payload to match up with the data that we're trying to split up. So we're trying to split up these six calls that are on the board down here. We're trying to put those as our message payload because that's what split is accepting. So if we go back to our palette and we go to the change node, I always get change and switch mixed up. I'm sure you might too. If we pull in the change node, that'll actually let us manipulate the payload. So we're gonna double click on that and we're gonna say, let's set the message payload to this, to what we're actually receiving in. So we're gonna get rid of all the rest of this stuff and just flatten it to this array here. And here's how we're gonna do that. You can see set message payload to the value of, and if we click this pull down here, we click message and we're gonna set it to the value of payload, right? So we're looking up here, payload and then RSS that's where we're at here. 
and then channel, because that's where we're at here. And then if you notice, channel is actually an array. So conceivably, there could be, we're on the, we're on the first item in this array, there could be multiple channels in this. There's only one channel, but we still need to be able to reference that. So we're going to reference the first channel in the array. And because this is, uh, if we think back to computer science, the first item in our array is 0, the 0th item. And then from there, uh, that, that first item is an object. We want the item in that object. So we click Deploy. And again, same as before, give ourselves a little room to work here. We're going to put the message payload in, in the path. So let's see how that looks. Before we stick the split in there, let's actually see what we're getting now. Let's zip this up. Good night. Put that all away. Click Deploy. And hit that. And look at that. Now our message payload is an array of seven items. Looks like they added another call to their board. So we have zero through six. And this must be the newest item. So if we click on it, uh, ambulance response, and then there's our geo data. So that's the data that we actually want to work with. But we still have it in this long array. We want individual objects. We want individual messages. So if we stick split in there, you can see it puts it in place. Let's give ourselves a little room so we see what we're doing here. Click Deploy. Let's clear out our debug and hit Deploy again. And look at that. Now we have six individual messages that we can work with. We have the, the first item all the way through the last item. And if we click in here, we see the geo data, we see the title information, everything we want to know about all these different calls. Cool. So what can we do with this information now that we have it? We're going to need to put uh, this title and this geo point in a format that's actually useful for us for sending it out as cursor on target. We're parsing it, we're getting it help in a good format, but we need to go from there. So I'm going to jump over to a working example that I've set up. And if you'll notice, it actually looks very similar to what we already set up. Uh, we're in, we have our trigger on the left here. We're going out and we're grabbing our uh, XML feed. We're parsing the XML. We're renaming that payload. Remember, we had to dig really deep down into that object. And then we're splitting it up. And you'll see once I split it up, I'm actually spitting the output of split to these two uh, orange or pink, depending on your gamut, uh, nodes here. And these are function nodes. So the way I created these was I clicked on it, I dragged it, and I brought it over. And let's take a look at one. Let's take a look at the first one, the red map one. This is what's going to let us create a map that we can actually view on our screen. So what I'm doing in here, I've double clicked on it, and I'm actually opened it up. And it's actually showing us uh, JavaScript. So one of the neat things you can do in Node-RED is you can actually put in straight up JavaScript uh, or straight up Node.js and run that against your data stream. So the first thing I'm doing in here, and this is just my own personal practice, you may have other ways of doing this, is I'm copying the message payload that we're receiving into a new variable. That way I can manipulate it. Um, it's referenceable. I don't have to keep going back into memory and getting it. Uh, I just have it referenceable as this new variable called PL. And then the next thing I'm doing is, if you remember that RSS uh, point, geo RSS point that we're getting, it's in a weird format. It's not a format that's actually useful for us. It's this latitude, space, longitude, string. Well, we don't really want it as a string, and we don't really want it with this space in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to extract it, and we're going to split it using the JavaScript split function. Um, and you might also notice that I have, I'm referencing this uh, attribute uh, using this bracket format. And that's because the name of the attribute has this uh, semicolon in the middle. And we can't use that with dot notation in JavaScript. So that's the only reason I'm, I'm referencing it this way. Otherwise, if you look down here on line 9, uh, dot line 9, I'm referencing the title attribute, but I'm just using the dot notation. And that's because the title attribute doesn't have any funky characters in it. So I'm looking at the payload. I'm extracting geo RSS point. And again, it's a list. So we're just extracting the, or an array in JavaScript. We're extracting the 0th item of the array, and we're splitting it up. So we're going to go from having this string with a space in the middle to having two strings uh, in an array that we can reference. From there, we're going to create a new payload. right? Node.js communicates by payload. So we're going to receive a payload. We can manipulate our payload. 
we can assign our payload to a new variable. And then we're going to create a new payload for our output. And what's going to make up that new payload is uh, we're going to create an attribute called name. And we're going to assign name to the title that we received. And then we're going to set latitude to the first point, the first uh, item in the array that we extracted. And we're going to set longitude to the second item in the array we extracted. Again, right? Here's the first item. Here's the second item. First item, second, second item. Latitude, longitude. And that's it. The output of this is going to be an object message payload that has three things in it, name, latitude, and longitude. That's it. What are we going to do with that? We're going to spit that into the world map node. Uh, now, world map doesn't come with node red out of the box, but it's really easy to install. Uh, in the upper right hand corner here, if you click on the sandwich menu or the hamburger menu, pull down and scroll down to manage palette. If you click on manage palette and then click on install, all you got to do is punch in world map and you'll see world map will come up on here. And if you don't have it installed already, there'll be an install button here and you click it and now you have world map. And if you already have it installed, you should see it here under the nodes screen. You can see uh, node red contrib web world map. So I've already got it installed. So if I scroll down here on my palette on the left, you can see under location, I've got world map. I've already dragged that onto my screen here. And if we look at the help for it, and the way I'm going to view the help for it is, if I click on the um, help icon here, it looks like a little textbook. And then I click on the node, it will actually show me the help for that node. And world map expects really only three things in its payload. It expects a name, a latitude, and a longitude. And if you recall, that's all we're giving it. We're giving it a name, a latitude, and a longitude. If we double click on it, we can actually configure it. And you can see I've already configured it for uh, a center point here in the uh, Australian Capital Territories. And then I've given it a web path down on the bottom. So just slash ACT. And that's going to be relative to your node red instance. So you can see I have it running here on my local host, same as my node red. And it's at slash ACT. So there we go. So if I load this up and if I, if I shift reload for you, you'll see It'll load up and it'll focus in here on Canberra and I'll switch it to a nicer looking map. And then there's lots of options that you can, uh, you can apply here, but we're just using the default options for now. So we're using OpenStreetMap. I've got it zoomed in here on the Australian Capital Territories. Cool, so it looks like we're ready to go. Let's go back to our debug screen. So if you recall, all we have to do to kick this off is we click Inject. That'll send something through. We're gonna split it up we're going to create a new message based on the data we're receiving, and we're going to spit it out to our map. And uh, to avoid any confusion, I'm going to kill this link for now, just so we're only doing one thing at a time. Cool, so let's make it happen. I'm going to click Inject. If we go over to our map, hey, look at that. We've got our calls on the board. So if we click on any of these calls, you could see we've got the basic information we've given it, the name, the latitude, and the longitude for each of the calls on our board. Awesome. Look at that, all over the place. There's a lot of customization you could do here if you want to continue to send this data to world map. But our goal today was to actually get this data into ATAC. So we've still got ATAC here. So what do we need to do to get that? So we're going to go back to node red. And the next thing we want to do is we're going to create a new function that's going to convert this uh, XML feed into cursor on target. So similar to how we did it for the map, I've created a function node here. So if we go into it, if we double click on it, you can see we're doing similar stuff. We need to go in here and we need to split up the geo point or the geo RSS point. And then we create a new payload. Again, same as before. This one's a little different. This one's in a format that the next node we hand it off to is expecting. Uh, the next node we're gonna hand it off to is the TAC node. And it expects a specific format so that it can turn this data into cursor on target. And the minimum variables we're going to need in there are, uh, are shown here on the screen. We need to set a time, stale, start, a type, a UID, and uh, point information, so latitude and longitude. Uh, I've included additional data in here, like a uh, call sign, which will make the call, uh, which will make the uh, point a little easier to display in ATAC. And there's tons of things you can customize in here. 
Uh, you might even want to go in and set a more uh, unique U UID, but this is what we're rolling with for now. So we're going to take the title, same as before, we were using the name, we we're setting it to name, now we're setting it to call sign. Um, otherwise, latitude and longitude are still latitude and longitude we're extracting here. So how do we actually turn that into cursor on target? Well, we're using the TAC node. So if I click on that node, here's the help page for it. Here's the attribute to the, or the, uh, the payload it's expecting. Um, if you don't have this installed, again, you can go up to your sandwich menu, go down to palette, click on install and search for TAC. And it'll be node red contrib TAC. And go ahead and click install that. Once it's installed, you should see it here on your left screen. And this node we have here came from our left side uh, under parser there's a TAC node and just drag that into place. So any data coming out of here is going to go to the TAC node. The TAC node is going to spit it out as cursor on target. So before we actually do anything else with it, let's, let's look what that cursor on target will look like. So I'm going to t put a debug node in here. I'm going to connect those two. And I'm going to add this inline. And there's no limit to the amount of uh, outputs you can pipe this to. Um, you can see I have two here. Most of the nodes leading up to this have one input and one output, but you could have multiple inputs, multiple outputs. So for this, for each item that I split, I'm gonna hand one off to, I'm gonna hand it off to node red map, and I'm also gonna hand off to cursor on target. So I hit deploy, hit that, and look at that. We have a lot of well-formatted XML cursor on target here in our debug window. So what can we do with that? Well, we could copy and paste this and, and do something with it if we wanted to, but what would really make this helpful is if we could do something like send it directly to ATAC. So that's what we're gonna do next. I've added a network node in here. So if you scroll down on the left to network, you could you have a bunch of options for networking, TCP in, TCP out, TCP request, UDP, UDP out. I've dragged a UDP out node to here, and I've put in the a default ATAC uh, multicast address and port. So ATAC's default multicast message uh, port is 6969, and its default group is 239231. Um, I have a pretty basic network at home. Uh, my tablet is on Wi-Fi. My laptop is on Wi-Fi. Uh, multicast works here. Your mileage may vary at home. I'm sorry if you have to fight multicast problems, but uh, for the sake of this video, we're going to assume that your multicast at home works. And all we need to do is connect the output of this TAC node to the input of our UDP node and click deploy. So we don't have anything on screen yet, but if we go in here and we inject, you could see that calls start showing up on our screen. And there's no other additional data in here under, other than positional and title information. But as you go through and you increase your understanding of the types of data you can add, you can add additional remarks, information, address information, and all of that to your cursor on target to get a mo more robust interface on ATAC. Well, I hope some of you found that useful. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. Um, you can sponsor me on GitHub. Uh, thanks for listening.